Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we want to create a simple shader that will allow us to take these graphics, which is only one, and apply a shader to them where if they get hit by a bullet, you can see that they flash. And we're going to take it one step further, and we're going to use pretty much the exact same shader and create something like this, where we hover over one of these icons. We show the user that you can interact with them. So you should see that this one is flashing, and each one we can go to, and they will hover over. So that's what we're going to be creating. So let's roll the intro and get right into it. So we have our blank project in front of us and I'll just quickly go over a couple things. We have our sprites here. Any of the sprites that I'm using, uh, such as the background, the diamond and the cars that you can find in the sources and you can get them off of the Open Game Art website. Now, if I go to my room, I have two rooms set up. I have one with all the cars and then I have one with the diamonds. So the way that the cars are set up is we have an object here and there's really there's really nothing in it right now. There's the create event, which just chooses a random in, uh, sprite. And then we have a draw for draw self and nothing in the step. Whenever I click my mouse button, a bullet is instantiated and you can see that I'm just pointing it down and setting the speed. If I collide with the car, then we just destroy the bullet itself. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is let's work on this car and let's actually have it do something. So right now, as I said, we collide with the car and the bullet gets destroyed, but we need a way to tell the car that it has been hit. So if we go to the create event, let's add some variables in here. We will add three different variables. We'll say was hit equals false. Uh, we will have a hit timer and I'll make sure I spell that right. And then we also have a hit release and I'm going to set this to a room speed times 0.5. And the reason I'm doing this hit release is I don't want to set an alarm. So we're just going to use a countdown or a timer to say, okay, we've hit the vehicle. This is kind of your flashing state. Once you've hit this flashing state release timer, then we're going to reset. So let's do that now. In the step event, we want to say only when the car has been hit, do we want to increase that timer? So we could say if was hit. Otherwise, all we want to do is say the hit timer equals zero so if we haven't been hit we'll reset that timer if we have been hit then our hit timer will just be increased by one now like i said we need a way to reset our hit timer and we can do that with the hit release variable so we could say if our hit timer is bigger than our hit release then all we want to do is say was hit equals false which the next frame what would happen is it would come in here and reset everything for us so even if i hit f5 right now nothing's actually happening we have nothing going on but you can see our bullets are dropping so we still need a way to tell that we've hit this vehicle so to do that let's go into the object bullet and you can see that i have a collision event right here and that is by going add collision and then the object car Right now we are destroying the instance, which is the bullet itself. But what we want to do is we want to go into the object car and we want to tell it that it has been hit. So to do that, we have a special variable, which is other. And because we're in a collision event, the other is going to refer to whatever instance we collide it with. So we say with other, and we only want to make sure that we hit the car once. So we could say if was hit equals false, meaning that we haven't been hit yet, then we'll just set was hit to true. Now, the reason we're doing this little if statement or logical statement here is because if I continuously throw the bullets at it, I want it a little bit of cooldown before it resets to the next uh, flashing red or damage cycle. Now, with all of this set up, the only thing that we need to do is actually create the shader itself. So in the car, you can see that we have the create event, we have all of the instances or sorry all of the variables for the hitting we have the step already done next we need to do the draw event so we could say if we were hit so if was hit then we want to come in here otherwise we'll just say let's draw ourselves so if we were hit obviously we need to still draw the sprite but we need to set the shader so we'll say shader underscore set we haven't written this shader yet so we'll say sh flash let's do flash red and then we need to do a reset to say, use the regular shader, whatever that is for game maker. So right now we're going to set the shader draw the sprite and then reset it. 
So let's go ahead and create this one right here. So we'll right click on shaders and say create and we'll name it SH flash red. Now shaders come with two different files. We have a vertex file, which is the position. And then we also have the fragment shader, which is the color itself. We're gonna be dealing with the fragment shader. And what I need to know is I need to have a timer to go up and down so that we can flash the red color on and off. So I'm gonna create a new variable and it's gonna be a uniform float and we will call it U timer. Anytime we have uniform in there, that means that we're gonna pass it through to the shader from the object that is being called. Next thing I want to do is this GL frag color. This is the end color of our actual pixel. So I want to take everything that I have here. I'm just going to cut it out and store it in a new vector four called final color. And I'll just set it equal to whatever the game maker had there. Now, remember final color is going to be made up of red, green, blue, and alpha. And in our case, we just want to move the red value up and down. So we can say the final color dot red is going to be multiplied by 2.0 and let's just leave it at that for now so we'll say it the gl fried color to our final color and the only thing we need to do is worry about this timer here so i'm going to copy this variable i'm going to go to our car in our create event i'm going to create a new handle so that i can access that variable so in here i'll have a shader get underscore uniform and the shader that we are referring to is the first variable, which is the red one. And then in quotes, we need the actual variable name. Make sure you spell this correctly or the handle will not point to the correct variable. We also need to store this as a variable. So I'll just say sh handle timer equals this guy here. So I will increase this a little bit so it's easier to see. Now that we have a handle into this particular variable, all we need to do is set it. So in the draw event, let's go ahead and set it before we draw ourselves. So we can say shader underscore set, and we want a uniform F, which is the float value. So we'll pass in our handle, which is a handle timer. And then we need to pass in the timer variable, which is being increased. So we'll paste that in and let's see how we did here. So really anytime that the car is hit, it should go red. And you can see it does, and then it stops. So you can actually, you'd be pretty good using this, but if you want it to flash like before, what we need to do is we need to take the step event here, and we need to grab this hit timer, and we need, to, we need to do a little math to it. So if we go to flash red, make this bigger, instead of just adding 200% here, you wanna say plus the sin of U timer, and I'm gonna slow it down to 0.5. So what this will do is sin is going to take a amount in here and it's going to give us in between negative one and one and it's just going to fluctuate up and down so if i hit a five and the car gets hit you should see that red color kind of fades in and out so you can see that now we have a nice damage effect and if i take a look at my sprites yeah, I have different cars here, but if I go into one of them, I am not drawing any cars red. It's all being handled by this actual shader here. Now let's take it a little bit further. And I have the pretty much the exact same thing here, just called flash white. If I go over here, you can see that the only thing I've done is I've slowed it down a tiny bit more. So if I run this code and I go to the next room, you can see that when I hover over it, we're flashing these diamonds red. So we wanna change that in order to flash them white. And that's actually very easy to do. All we need to do is we need to change not only the red, but we need to change the green and the blue value as well. And instead of adding to it, I wanna make sure that I just have the correct amount here, which will be the 100% of whatever that color is. And then I will add the absolute value of this timer variable right here. So absolute value will say if the sin of U timer times 0.5 is say something like negative five, it's gonna take the absolute, which would be just 0.5 and add it into the RGB color. So if I hit F5 and we go to the next scene, now we are not only increasing the red value, but we are increasing the red, green, and blue, which will give us that shine effect. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you learned a thing or two. A big thank you and shout out to my Patreon supporters in no random order, Juju B85, Annie, Victor, 
Edward, Manuel, Jesus, Ashby, Kylie, and Ville. Thank you guys so much for your support. And finally, I thought a great giveaway game for this video could be Turok 2. It's first come, first serve, as always. And please let me know the feedback on this. I just have a bunch of games that I don't really play, and I thought what better way to do something with them than share them with the community. Not even sure if it's worth it wild or not, but just leave some feedback. And once again, thanks for watching.